What's good, you guys? How are you? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> so, this is going to be your Sunday Lunar Report. I know usually I go live at 8 on Sundays, but today I'm not going to do that. And this may be a permanent change. I don't know yet. I have to see how I feel about things. Okay, so yes, we'll see how things go. Um, but for those of you who are new here, I'm Chanel with Lizzie's Charm, and we're about to get into the Sunday Lunar Return Report. Usually I do this on Instagram, do it live, talk about the moon transit throughout the week, and um, pull cards as well. So outside of me pre-recording this, what I'm also going to do differently is during the card portion, I'm going to let you guys pick a card, all right? That way it can be a little bit more personal for you, not so generalized and all of those things. So, um, announcements, uh, over on my Instagram at it's listed below, we have a context going on. So when you interact, like, share, um, and all of those wonderful things, uh, when you share, tag me in the share and your story. So I know, so I can see it and I'm keeping track of this and whoever has interacted the most um i'm choosing three people you guys will be getting a a free reading of your choice um the only thing is that they can't be live it has to be pre-recorded so also we still have the 27 dollar anything reading where you can ask any question or just get some general insight um for $27 that's on the website you go on the website it's up there you can see it immediately so I'm also going to be uh, incorporating a few things um so this lip stain y'all need to check out my homegirls uh her makeup line okay beauty and grace <laughs> I bought some a lip stain from her and some concealer and y'all it's amazing okay it's cruelty free it's no nothing it's vegan okay it's natural it's that kind of a lip stain that you want that don't make your lips chapped and all those wonderful or terrible things okay it's moisturizing and it lasts all day i wore it the other day I had to wash my face to take it off. It don't get no better than that, okay? <laughs> so, now I'm going to list her website below and her Instagram page as well. You guys go check her out. And if you're watching this on Instagram, it is listed below in the description. So, if you are here on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe. If you do subscribe, make sure you click the notification bell so that... You can see when all the videos come through. And yes, that is it. We're about to get into this lunar week and see what's going on. And also, happy love day, you guys. I hope that you are having a, a lovely love day. You know, feeling the love, giving the love, even if it's just self-love. That's so important, you know? So let's get into this and talk a little bit about the um astrology so yes the moon starting tomorrow we're going to start for tomorrow and the moon will be conjunct chiron so we may be having some things pulling at our heartstrings, you know, some things to come up and look at and um, be like, see me, see me, deal with me, deal with me, you know, kind of energy. And it's in a trying, I'm sorry, in a benevolent aspect of a sextile to um, Saturn, but also to Mercury that's in retrograde. So this is about um, our, not necessarily our routines, but um how it is that we're going about uh finding success within our lives it's also about our 
our wounds surrounding our reputation, how we believe that other people see us, right? Because we don't actually know how people see us, right? So if we've had experiences where people have said something to us with Mercury being in retrograde and being in Aquarius, this being the sign of friendships and people that we like and connecting with them, those things may come up for us to really move through and um, become aware of so that we can let it go, you know, and however you choose to let it go is up to you. You know, um, there are so many different facets of healing that can be, um, or modalities, I should say, that you can connect to in, you know, just getting back to a space of remembrance, right? Because it's, not really ever anything that we need to heal. We're just like remembering like, oh yeah, this is who I am. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So um, then it will also be in this same aspect to Jupiter. So this may either exasperate these feelings, make them larger, make them um, a little more in our foresight and uh, put us in the place to be able to gain the knowledge and working through this, you know, so we can, it can support us on our path, the know-how, but also changing our minds about what it is that we, the perception it is that we had about it before, um, really when it comes to our identity and again, how it is that we have been perceiving ourselves, how people even also how people perceive us pro projecting out our energy, giving our um, giving ourselves to them, you know, whether that is with it being in Aries, this can be a wound surround uh, feeling selfish or being selfish or when really you just needed to get some time for yourself or perhaps you haven't been selfish enough in seeing that like, oh, I can't keep giving my energy in this way um, I need to change it up a little bit more, which kind of speaks to me recording this video here um, instead of going live because it's it's so much um, uh, energy that is put into um, doing this, but also when you're live as well, you know, so um, because it's interactive and I love that so much, but I need to... Um, just be a little bit more uh, vigilant, I guess you could say, on how, on which ways and direction that I want to give away long term. Is that is that sustainable for me? And in reality, it's not. You know. So, um, yes. So along with those energies, there. Let's see what else is here. Then the moon will also be um, connecting with Venus and with the North Node tomorrow. So uh, we may be feeling very, very loving, um, you know, but loving in a way that it, where it's sharing our unique love language uh, based off of who it is that we are, you know. And so this is kind of like learning to not do something based off of um, how someone else needs it, but based off of what it is that we can provide for it, <laughs> what it is that we can provide, um, through it, through the influence, through the energy, through our capacity, what it is that we have, um, to give. And this is also really creating room for us to receive, all right? Because when you start, stop giving your energy away, in so many different areas, so many different aspects that, again, is not sustainable for you. It clogs you up. It doesn't leave you open. Uh, it doesn't give you space in order to expand, right? Which is um, with this connection in Jupiter, what that's also going to offer, you know, and really with the type of aspect it is, we'll be having to do the work to do this. Like, it's going to take some effort. It's not something that's just going to be like, okay, wake up. Oh, I realize it's like, I see this. Now I have to do this. I have to switch this up some, you know, and it'll also, I said, in a sextile to the North Node. So all this energy that's connecting over here to Aquarius and 
having all these understandings, these um, kismatic moments, I guess we could call them, um, is really supporting us if, uh, in aligning to the self it is that we need to be in order to move forward within our destiny on our path, especially when it comes to um, how we see things, how we see the eyes, we see the world through our perspective, how we relate to people. You know, Gemini is about connecting with people just because, because they like to interact, they like to um, have fun, you know, versus I'm doing this for this reason. Granted, that is not casted out, that still exists, but um, it's more of finding balance right in that that area of between selfish selfish and selfless right of the giving and the receiving um aspect of things right so then later on so after that, it'll be on Tuesday, it'll be in a square to Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn. I don't know why I always want to call Pluto Capricorn, but it'll be in a square to, um, to Capricorn. This will be around like mid-morning. So by the time 10 o'clock Central Standard Time arose around, we may, be, we may start to feel a little bit anxious in what it is that actually has to be done in order to transform, in order to uh, reconcile these energies in the ways that we've been giving them out, you know, and um, even reconcile in the way that we have not been, how we have been selfish in any regard, you know, and this really allowing us to uh, see the light Right, because it's allowing us to transform old structures and align this with our heart space, you know, really allow us to tap into the feelings that are going to um, not necessarily change the trajectory, but a shift the way that we have been going about reaching our achievements, our successes, um, you know, and even how it is that we've been feeling about it and how it is that we've been feeling about ourselves within that, you know, this may also bring a little bit of aggression, may bring a lot of passionate energy. It could even just be a lot of sexual energy as well. Um, but it could be very, um, intense, you know, cause Aries is, is it, at the forefront in your face, like, Hey, how you doing? You know, and Pluto is like, um, hey, I'm here. Do you see me? Like, uh, touch me, see me, love me, you know, um, recognize what it is that I'm capitalizing on here and you fall in line, right? Because it's very possessive in a sense. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of conflict in regards to both energies because the moon in Aries just kind of wants to be this free-spirited entity doing its own, own thing where in, in Pluto wants to, wants everybody involved in their scheme of things, you know, so it's almost as if like, what is it that you're going to choose? Can I find balance here? Is this, is the options that I have in balancing even worth, um, utilizing my energy in balancing along with these things. Maybe I just need to disconnect from that idea altogether and do something totally different, right? This is starting new lineages through your own individual nature perception and all of those things. So let's see what else do we have here. The move will be Void, of course, come Tuesday evening, and then it will begin to come into, um, it will go in to Taurus, <laughs> like as soon as the day starts on Wednesday, so at midnight, and this is going to bring in in the early morning some connection with Uranus, so depending on what happened the day before, right? Whatever changes, whatever transformations it is that you see that you needed to make, um, now 
these things are going to come into effect. All right, you've seen the work it is that needed to be done on Monday and Tuesday in order for you to align to this higher perspective, this higher expression, um, do like packing light and doing things in an easier way. Also uh, connecting and relating and expressing yourself through your, um, your unique sense of self, your unique love language, your unique sense of values and worth, right? And then it's gonna bring the shift come come Wednesday and you're going to start implementing the work if you've paid attention if you've recognized and seen what it is that um, has to be done where it is that you're going um, the steps it is that need to be made like have aligned with the right thinking the right beliefs the right know-how right and then you you can you have the opportunity to start implementing these things and placing them into your into your world into your real life right because um Uranus and Taurus is about the people of the earth, right? Because Uranus is about others, it's about community, and Taurus is the earth energy. You know, Venus rules Taurus, but the earth could easily rule Taurus as well, you know, and it'll start bringing up any, it will start being revealed where it is that, um, with the details that we missed, right? So this might bring up a little conflict, a little bit of anxiety, you know, or something. This might bring up um, a ch some challenges or just some stifle, stagnation in being able to move forward in this. Like you may have to end up dealing with real life before you can actually shift into this higher octave thing you know, this higher sense of understanding and expression and letting that live through you, through your life, right? So um, it's going to do with our perception, our mind, the way we think, our connection with our siblings, our immediate family. This may even just have to be with things that have, these may be things coming up that we may just be remembering that created conflict for us in regards to these people, you know, and how it is that this has manifested within our world and how our life looks now because of that, based off of the response that we gave through that. And the moon has the support of Uranus in letting things change very quickly, letting it be like, yes, you know, let's go. Um, and having the heart to do this and allowing you to really expand and connect with people who um, see life the way that you see life, you know, who um, recognize the truth, whether other people see it as the truth or not, you know, and also people who, you know, show you um, a lot of gratitude and affection in regards to um how it is well, a lot about what it is that you have you know what it is that you're doing where you're going but also um the pay the path that you're on you know so let's see and that will be wednesday and thursday will be in these energies and really um finding footing finding our grounding in that you know, Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, that this square is happening with, with all of these planets, it, it brings a little bit of stabilization, like things aren't so chaotic. Granted, the other day, my husband was showing me this picture of these pictures of this accident that was on the freeway in Dallas and one of those trucks that carry the cars, the transport, I guess one of the cars fell off. It created a gigantic mess on the road like it was so many cars piled up it was something that you seen like off of transformers or something <laughs> it um it was crazy now this can definitely bring that kind of energy depending on in your personal life depending on where it is that you are what you're doing what you got going on what you're thinking how you're feeling how you're responding you know all those things but um granted it with Uranus, I don't, I've never seen it actually be 
um, anything that chaotic unless it was like out in the public, out in the collective, not ever personally, unless uh, someone was actually just not paying attention to life, you know, just oblivious. So when we operate in that way, sometimes we have to have very um, shocking events happen for us to shift our shit, you know? So let's see. What else do we have here? So on on Thursday, um, the moon will be still conjuncting, I mean, still in a square to the other um, planets, to the other planets in Aquarius, Jupiter and Venus. These transits will be happening. So we'll still be fin feeling this energy from Wednesday here through Thursday. And it will be coming into a conjunction with Mars. And this is the day that is actually going to be in that square aspect with Venus. So with the let's talk first with the conjunction. Um, Mars and Taurus, uh, you know, it's not as um, cutthroat as Mars is in Aries or Gemini. You know, is it, it takes more time to recognize and, and see through what it is that um, is the light, where the light is being shed, where what it is that we're seeing, um, how it is that we're going about what we're doing, you know, what we're building, the time uh, that we're putting in toward planning. Granted, it creates a lot more activity here, but it's not as expressive. It's not as um, aggressive. You know, granted, um, Mars and Taurus will still pop off regardless. So with the moon there, it brings a little bit more nurturing, you know, a little bit more calm. The moon in Taurus is exalted, you know. So when a sign, when a planet is in a sign that it exalts in, this is better than. So it's better, it expresses itself better than it does in Cancer. And this is because of that very grounded nature of, um, and fixed nature of Taurus. Like it's very similar to Cancer. Um, wanting to have the security, wanting the home, you know, wanting to have things in order to make sure that you can go about living. But Taurus energy, um, it's less chaotic in going about achieving this. Like the emotions, are there, but they don't get in the way. Instead, it's a little bit, I can't say it's more intuitive than a moon in Cancer, but it's practically intuitive, I should say. And so with it being in a square to Venus, um, first of all, with Venus and Mars being in a square, that could create, um, you know, conflicts between polarities, right? So conflicts between balance in balancing your yin and your yang energy how is that you need to be going about expressing and resting you know what where do you give too much where you're not giving enough are you already doing that great you may be receiving something from this due to that you know something that is going to make your heartstrings flutter right so this is um really a way in um in growth you know moving forward toward our worth whether we are experiencing lesser than um energies or or better than you know either way we always are receiving the opportunity to um either continue expanding or to begin expanding it's really a however it is that life is going for you as always, right? So it'll be in a trine now to Pluto in um, Capricorn. So that kind of power struggle energy that was going on on um, Monday and Tuesday and trying to just see if we were gonna align ourselves with um, the structures that Pluto is, the its grand scheme of things, its game plan, whether we chose to align to that or not, it's going to manifest on this day, right? So whatever it is that you chose will be, 
come Thursday, what, whatever decisions it is that you made, whatever you realized, wherever it is that you decided, um, direction it was that you were deciding to take. Um, this can also speak of, um, it may be a very uh, grounded day of rebirthing. So we may uh, be finding ourselves rebirthing in regards to receiving from the efforts that we have been putting in. So we may be uh, attaining some type of reward, some type of recognition, just being seen in general um, by others because of how we show up, you know, and this may change or shift or more so aligned to the self-value and self-worth it is that we naturally have for ourselves but may have been disconnected from based off of whatever has been coming up for us in our life whatever experiences it is that we have been having you know so come friday morning the moon will be void of course so it'll be time to kind of you know digest take things in really um you can sit with whatever it is if you have time that has come up for you these shifts that have happened in your life you know and as the moon in the afternoon on friday moves into gemini we'll feel that energy shift and we'll be ready to um, make some moves because gemini is a mover it rules short trips okay so <laughs> maybe you may be taking some short trips because the moon is about to trine all of this energy in Aquarius. Maybe you may be connecting with people from at a distance. You know, it may even be some, real quick, let me go back with the energy on Thursday with it being in a trine to Pluto, the moon in Taurus. That may manifest as um, a rebirth as in regards to any type of ancestral, anything that you've been holding on to that you may have been trying to work through or that you have realized that shifting, all right, that's coming to the forefront and in a very easily, um, easily dealt with seen way, all right. So then again, with the moon in Gemini, it's going to begin um, trining all of this energy in Aquarius, which is benevolent. And it's also, it'll be, let me see, Friday evening, it'll be in a sextile with the sextile in Chiron. And so where it is we're going, where we're headed, how we communicate, how we connect, how we perceive, we're working through that in regards to our um, woundings, our experiences that have hurt us, hurt us or we feel have harmed us in a negative aspect and really moving through that and just uh, letting go in a sense or doing the work to let go of what it is that um, has been creating any type of false narratives within our life, within the way we communicate with ourselves because Gemini is also about personal self-communication, self-talk, you know, and really moving beyond any negative self-talk as well <clears throat> that is stopping and blocking us from being able to thrive. Okay, so it'll also be, this is Friday evening, so while, the, while we're sleeping, um, depending on what time we go to bed, uh, the moon will be in a trine to Saturn. So we will now be working through those blockages where it is that we need to be in our feelings about the work it is that needs to be done, paying attention to the details, you know, and moving through all of those things that um, kind of stop us from being able to move forward in our long-term goals. This is that Again, Aquamini energy, very, um, it's, it's, although it's air, it's a very expansive energy because um, Gemini and Aquarius is uh, put together, it's pretty much of almost, I can say, the highest intelligence, we can say, highest uh, space of knowing, right? Because this is practical knowledge, um, 
earthly knowledge, uh, that page knowledge, that experience that you gathered, right? That um, after having been inexperienced and uh, coming into this space of knowing it all, knowing what it is that needed to be known through the journey, through the the, the movement forward on the path, you know, just a very high octave way of perceiving, thinking, very God sense, you know, and also very masculine in nature. So we may be really active in um, making things happen, um, taking initiative, uh, but doing it in a very, okay, so it's important to be grounded, I should say, because Gemini and Aquarius both aren't the most grounded energies, right? So it's important that we take time to get grounded so we're not all over the place, all into uh, chaos within our bodies, within our nervous systems, within our lungs, you know, so that we can be present in the moment and see what it is that's here for us. What is it that's really going on? Are we going to make something a bigger deal than what it is? Or are we going to take the time to perceive, to see what it is that God is trying to um, consort with us? You know, what what is happening here? So <clears throat> then, let me see, not until Saturday will it be come into an alignment with Mercury as well as Jupiter. So this is this change of mind that we've had over the past, what is this, three days, I guess, Saturday, five days. <laughs> over these past five days, um, this is now really coming down into ourselves. Right, because this change of mind that has happened is not of um, it's not of a earthly nature. It's not of a um, a nature of something that could have been taught to you. Granted, it can, but what was taught to you is even further expanded on your ability to understand. I hope that makes sense. So. Yes, our mind and our hearts will be aligned. Our heart will be aligned with this uh, change in perspective, this change in uh, understanding, change in our, if we've had any change in direction, because with Mercury being in Aquarius, it can definitely shift the way, where it is, not where it is that we're going, but how it is that we're going about getting there, right? And um, ex elevating that, ex not, I don't want to say expanding, but heightening um, the frequency at in which we apply our understanding and the action that we're taking. But at home, this may be a very um, joyful day, maybe having a lot of lighthearted connections with friends, with family, with um you know, people that you love, you know, people that you choose to have in your life as well. And really being able to expand on this, just having a really good time when the moon comes in contact with um, Jupiter in this way. It, it's just a real effortless nature of, um, of a sense of adventure or a sense of passion, a sense of uh, enjoyment you know, and a feeling good about what's happening, who you're with, what you're doing, where you going, and all of that, okay? So let's see, you guys, we're almost done here with the moon astrology. So on Saturday as well, it'll be um, conjuncting with the North Node, so we'll be feeling very set on destiny, right? We'll be very particular about the choices we make and the responses that we give um, so that we can get to where we're going. Because at this point, it's like, I know. I know what I need to do. I know where I, where I want to go, what I'm doing, and this is how I'm going to get there. 
you know so just being it might be a very choosy kind of energy right because you're only focused on um the end game where you where's your aim you know where you going how you going to get there and how quick are you going to go because gemini and aquarius is concerned about speed right and it being in this connection with jupiter jupiter likes to go everywhere fast okay so with this energy it's important that we take time to write things down it's important that we take time to make sure we heard someone correctly before we jump to any conclusions, um, especially when it comes to how we're speaking, because we can easily, although this is a benevolent energy, we can easily express ourselves in a way that is less than benevolent, okay? Because it just comes so natural. You know, a trine can make it lazy, make it easy, make it like, I don't have to put that much effort into this, I don't care, you know? So it can definitely be that type of energy now it will also be in a square to neptune so this may be an illusory day which is going to be why which is why it's going to be so important to make sure that you're really paying attention to what it is that's going on because the the quick nature of aquarius and gemini both and then aquarius having all these planets in it which majority of them are um fairly jupiter is is the light is fire Mercury is air, is speed, and that's the day that Mercury comes out of retrograde. So it'll be in its shadow phase. It can be really easy to steal because then we'll be coming out of that retrograde energy, right? So it can be really easy to just misconstrue things out of, um, granted, this could bring some really powerful revelations and downloads um, and how to go about what it was how to go about applying all of the things that you wanted to change, wanted to shift, wanted to um, correct um, who you connected with and all of that during Mercury and retrograde, you know? So it it's important to just uh, take some time. If you have a spiritual practice, make sure you get really grounded in the morning so that you can be in your body, you can be in yourself, you can be connected to your intuition, you know, you can be connected to your feelings, right? Especially us women, because men, they have this easier than we do when it comes to seeing things. When it comes to understanding things, they are understanding. We, on the other hand, are feelings. So, we quick to jump to conclusions like that's not what that is when in reality it could be what that is <laughs> or it could be not what you think it is how you think you feel it is right because it's also a lot about projection as well uh gemini is a lot of project projecting type of energy because you're communicating with people you're connecting with people right so it's easily to perceive it's about perception and the perception when it comes to Gemini is based on the ideas and the thoughts it is that you have always had unless you shifted them. You know, it's not about, um, it's, it's uh, like a what you, what you think you know kind of thing when sometimes what we think we know ain't that. It's not that, you know. So it's a, a strong need to um, really make sure that you are seeing the forest for the trees. Tap into that Aquarius energy on Saturday and see it from a higher perspective. Don't be so quick to play a victim in something that you might not even be understanding, might not even be seeing clearly, you know, might not even be, um, it might not even be real, okay? This, that type of energy, that's the type of time we in. Where we, where our imagination is creating some really wild things. All right. So it's important for us to recognize where it is and where it isn't, you know. So this will be going into the evening on Saturday anyway. So definitely um, rest where you can when the moon and the, and Neptune come into a, a square. You kind of just want to chill out, you know. You could go and attempt to have a good time. Um, not saying that 
you won't be in the space that you need to be in in order to have a good time um but you don't know where everybody else is you know but this is also not this is not about living your life in fear either this is just about being aware of what's going on you know what's going on within yourself and the moon and neptune in contact with each other in this way it's a lot um a need to tap into the intuition right and instead of um creating some imaginative story something that may be fictional you know so let's see what else oh and it'll be in a conjunction to the north node i talked about that though so let's see what's going down on sunday you guys the moon will still be in um in Gemini, we'll still be feeling that Neptune and Moon energy. We may be feeling it even more strongly on this day. Um, it may bring some dreams that help and support us in moving through any type of conflict in regards to um, or any type of blockages or things that we have not been able to see when it comes to the way that we have been um, going about responding to things making the choices in our life you know that support us how we've been feeling about that you know and let me see what is this it's the third decan of gemini so venus uranus so this is very uranian in nature hmm so it can be very caustic in a sense, but in a very um, subtle way. Okay, you guys, sorry, I came out here. So, um, yes, I was saying that it could be, the dreams could be of a very um, enlightening nature. Um, might bring even some type of awakening in a sense, like you wake up with these ideas there's a card in the mermaid deck that I have and it says you never know um what your what your dreams may inspire or what your sleep may encourage you to act on something like that this is that energy you know and just really being able to um reconnect with your sense of self-worth your values through this you know, and um, see clearly. Now, there may be some things coming up in regards to people who you may be finding out that people see you in a way you didn't think they did, but um, like on a type of hidden enemy level. Granted, this could come through as unconditional love, but with... Um, it being a square, it could be of the latter, you know, of uh, it being negative, you know, and, you know, we'll just, we got to just let people feel how they feel. We can't control how it is that people view us. Um, all we can do is control ourselves <laughs> and respond with love like, oh, okay, you have a good day. So <laughs> let's see. And this could even bring in some energy with your neighbors as well, because Gemini is about neighbors and um, it could bring some type of confusion in regards to perspective. You may just be seeing things clear unclearly. You may be thinking neighbors are um, being some kind of way or don't like you or however the case may be when in reality that may not be the case. Or it could be the case. You just never know when it comes to things being square one another. It can either um, be a blow up, blow out, or it could be uh, something manifesting based off of the efforts that you've been putting in into your own personal life. You know, because when you change your perspective about things, all of a sudden everything outside of yourself is just different. Okay. So, Let's see. By the end of the day, the moon will be in a trine to 
Venus. So we may be feeling all the love, wanting to really connect and really communicate and really just have fun, have a good time with people that we really enjoy being around, who we love, but also um, have a lot of fun with too. You know, even our family who bring us that type of lighthearted joy who kind of show us that meaning of love like on a very pure sense you know um in a very honest and truthful way so after by the end of the night the moon will be in be void of course and at midnight come monday it goes into cancer and we will talk about that next week you guys so Yes, we are about to get into these cards. I'm going to um, give y'all some stones to choose from. Um, and then I'm going to shuffle, put the camera down so y'all can see the cards and all that wonderful stuff. And yeah, we're going to have at it. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so these are the stones you guys have to choose from. The first one is a Howl Light. Howl Light. And I'll talk about the stones once I get to reading the cards. This is an ocean jasper. And then we have a selenite wand. So let's go ahead and get into this shuffling and I will be right back. Okay, so pile one, we have here the Howlite stone. And Howlite is basically, well, for one, if you're having trouble, trouble sleeping at night, it definitely helps support that. Um, it rules Gemini, it's ruled by Gemini. Um, so it's of air nature, which is the energy that we will be ending the week with. Um, it also um, inspires creativity, um, it enhances or connects you with your creative expression as well. Um, it is good for calming an overactive mind and helps facilitate um, or formulate, I should say, your ambition and helps you achieve them. You know, it's a good, it's a great for your mind. It helps strengthen your memory. It helps um, encourage your desire to know things, to learn things. Um, and it helps teach patients in regards to where it is that you might just be wanting something to happen right now and, or just maybe going too fast about something. Um, it also helps in areas of stress and pain and you know, it has a very calming nature, so it can help calm uh, in communication. It helps expand on your awareness and supports you in being able to express yourself emotionally, which sometimes Gemini can have a hard time doing. Um, but no, and not really. It's more of the more. It's one of the more emotional uh, air signs. So. Um, Yes, so if you did choose this, you may um, have some things going on with whether it is um, your siblings, your immediate family, where it is that you're currently living. Perhaps you've been thinking about taking some short trips, or maybe you are in connection with a Gemini. Perhaps you are a Gemini, right? And, um, you know, it could just be time for you to really create, connect with your creativity because Geminis are highly creative people. You know, it this stone, it also um, calls in the number two. So perhaps you need to um, align with the awareness of your dual nature, your dualistic nature in a way that is affecting you in a not so supportive way. Um, 
perhaps needing to kind of get into a more tranquil state so that you can see things clearly as they are, you know, and really be able to express yourself from a very grounded space and not so mm, frantic if that is something that you have been dealing with, you know, in if you have been angry about things um under any type of stress or anything like that it's a great time to start working um on developing a sense of patience so let's see what cards you have here pile one so the first card you have is the two of the two of wands go figure with the how how light being of a two all right so this is about making a decision gemini is also about making decisions it's about having choices having options so this is about where where it is you're going how quick it is you're trying to get there but in reality you may need to make a plan you may need to actually get figure out where it is that you want to go how it is that you want to go about doing that um can you go as quick as you want to? Probably not with this how like coming out needing to develop patience, you know, and also recognizing about yourself, where it is that you are not aligned with yourself, with um, how it is that you wish to identify, how it is that you wish to relate yourself outwardly, express yourself outwardly, and um, see where it is within that energy that is stopping you from being able to make the movement it is that you want to um take the direction it is that you would like to take you know because it's about walking through a door making decisions so then you have king of cups so this let me see this may have to do with in regards to um Hmm. Okay, so perhaps you need to make a decision on how it is that you go about connecting with people, right? And the action it is that you are taking in doing so. Um, maybe it's a need for you to um, really align with how it is that you are perceiving things if it's keeping you in this space of emotional immaturity like if you are acting kind of like a child perhaps you need to reconnect with your inner child to help support you in moving forward and making a decision so that you can connect to your creative nature so that you can be inspired to action you really need to pay attention to your intuition listen to any spiritual downloads it is that you are having you know really connect with your um, emotional nature in a way that is um, grounded and solid and mature to help support you in moving forward into these decisions, you know, because um, he has this cup here and he's ready to offer it, but you need to figure out where it is that you're offering it to, um, you know, or what steps need to be taken in order to offer in order that way you can have what it is that you want so that that feels right for you that feels um aligned to you you know that uh feels at home for you and really feels good that aligns you with your desired nature your de desired state of being your personal desires all right so yeah okay so we have protection here this has something to do with um calling back your power so with this king of cups and two of cups energy what i was getting was also probably need to make a decision about a relationship right in in your connection in that relationship with this protection card it speaks about calling back your power cutting cords and soul retrieval so this is about recognizing where it is that you've been giving your energy away in um in a sense of respect and honor of attempting to make another person satisfied happy however that may be but perhaps you may also just need to protect your energy from any type of illusions that you may be um falsely aligning with in that keeping you in um the more shadowy aspect of this king of cups energy you know that may have you in a space of feeling scattered a space of uh 
just not really seeing things clearly. It's definitely time to cut cords with any type of situation, any type of people, any type of understanding, thoughts, emotions that create that type of environment for you. And so it's over. You have the completion. It's time to end the cycle. It's time to stop, stop going around and around, eating your tail. You know, just time to end the old cycle so that you can get ready and prepared to walk through this new door in this new skin of who it is that you are, you know, and um, allow things to come full circle, recognize that the past has happened for whatever reasons they have happened and allow that to integrate into your reality now. Let those lessons become um, pathways to where it is that you are going, to the direction it is that you are choosing, to the door it is that you're choosing to walk into. So we have the Sith Mermaid here, and the Sith Mermaid speaks of the power that creates and sustains you, heals you. So the Sith Mermaid, one speaks of, let me see, I can't remember. One, it's about, again, coming out of these infinite cycles that we kind of place ourselves in, um, that we see as, as is, when in reality, uh, fate is in our hands by choice and response. You know, and it speaks about action. So it's about paying attention to the actions it is that you are keeping, the way in which it is that you are going. Can you find the courage within yourself to um, align with your personal integrity? It doesn't matter what anybody else assumes or believes or says it should be. It's about what it is that you feel is right within. This also speaks about... Um, dispersing any darkness right you have this protection card so i think got this king of cups card here so this might have to something to do with um someone you were in connection with who kind of inspired this emotion within you that kind of had you going 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 in circles and it's time to call your power back from that it's time to let that go you know because whoever this person was um had was a vampire in regards to y'all's connection and when I say vampire, I'm meaning um, basically seeing things, drawing on others' positive energy to invigorate their own destructiveness, right? So um, this can be someone who is, you know, some people seek validation out of whatever kind of thing that they're into, whatever they're doing, whether it's good or whether it is um, prosperous or destructive. You know, so it's important to really take time to keep a clear mind and stay in touch again with your intuition, you know, so that you can um, stay aligned with the goals, with the, the steps it is that need to be taken every day to meet your goals, to meet your long-term ambitions. You know, this week, the sun goes into Neptune. So we are about to be... I mean, what am I talking about? The sun goes in the Pisces. So we're about to be revealed a lot of stuff that has been hidden from us, whether that has been within ourselves or in our relationships. It really just depends on where that is in your chart. It even could be within the relationships um, where that lands in your chart, you know. And this, and don't be mistaken that this can't also just be you and yourself. You experiencing something good and all of a sudden seeing the negative in the situation, that may be a, a sense of perspective, a sense of emotional nature that it's time to let go of and so that you can see the beauty, the joy, the light that is here supporting you, you know, and if you need help in trying to figure this out, ask someone who can help you, you know, in a way that's not going to cause them any type of uh, separation from what it is that they have going on, what it is that they are doing. Wow. So the astrology card here that came out is Gemini. So this is about you, right? This is about your thoughts. This is about how it is that you're thinking um, about things and how um, your emotions have been influencing your thought patterns. So it's definitely um, time to uh, realign with a better sense of perspective that is going to support you from, granted, it doesn't, just because it's about you doesn't mean that there have not been people in your life who have been this, um, simply because when we're seeing things a certain way, we're receiving things a certain way, we tend to show up in a way that draws in people 
um, right? Because Gemini is about connecting and relating to others, but it's also about your sense of wholeness, right? Having been disconnected from the wholeness of who it is that you are and receiving fragments of yourself through other people, you know, don't get in the habit of feeling like that these fragments that are reflecting uh, toward you through another person, um, that that is something to feel some kind of way about. It's just like, you know, I see myself, thank you for showing me what I could not see on my own, you know, and and just, you know, whatever it is that you feel necessary to do to the, for the, the, with the relationship, it is, you know, you can um, grow or let go. It's up to you, really. But most definitely, it's time to shift the perception about yourself, how you see yourself, how you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself, you know, and what it is that that really means. Because on the Sith card, it says the power that creates and sustains you heals you. Right, and Gemini and, and the King of Cups and Two of Wands is all about creation. So what it is that you're building, Gemini is also about small business. You know, so if you are a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, definitely focusing on that energy will be um, that support in helping you align, realign and gain that life force it is that you have been feeling missing in your life this is supporting you in calling back your power so okay then you got spontaneity here so definitely um be willing to just be spontaneous and whatever it is that you're doing if you feel it go with it follow that intuition you know um let let the tides roll in and and jump in the waves where you can you know really um let curiosity pique your interest enough in a way that is going to support you in taking action um, where you thought there was inaction, where you thought uh, that that may not that may not be a good idea. You know, where you may have seen things as impossible. It is the spontaneous, um, intuitive, inspired actions that usually lead us to where it is that. We did not know we were going, all right? <laughs> so in love and relationships, it's about independence, all right? So um, focusing on your your personal goals, your personal gains, your personal trek journey, where it is that you're going, your personal dreams and ideas. It says, I embrace total independence and I see how empowering that is. Even when I'm in a relationship, I can still be independent by meeting my own needs and creating my own happiness. When I do that, I'm full. I'm the fullest version of myself and I have much more of me to give without needing pieces of me in return. And this is that energy, right? Being independent within a whole, right? You don't, you. it's love. It's not about uh, connecting with someone so they can give you something you're missing. And that's really what breeds codependency. Um, Regardless, no matter what type of relationship you're in, it's going to have some codependent nature, but it's going to be codependent in a way that is supportive of all parties involved. And that can still involve independent entities connecting together, being codependent on one another. I think we have um, this misconstrued idea of what codependency actually is and the benefit of it. Right, because there's a difference between um, being codependent on a person and relying, and simply relying on reliable people, relying on people who um, say that they're gonna show up, you know, and who say that they're gonna do something, you know, and also being willing to be there for another person. All that falls under the um, underneath the uh, aspect of codependency. That doesn't make it toxic or unhealthy. Um, it simply means you have help. <laughs> oh, so yes, be independent in your um, dependent connections with others that bring you joy, bring you love, bring you happiness. You know, there's nothing better than um, having friendships where 
or having just love relationships where your happiness, where your sense of joy is not reliant on what the other person is doing, how it is that they are interacting with the same experiences that you are having, you know, and because you never know when you're going to have to uh, be there for somebody, you know, you might, it, it may just, it may not even be you, it may just be them having a day, you know, or just needing someone to talk to, but unsure of how to, you know, so that is really what independence really offers us. It's not so much about, um, I can do this by myself and all of this, but it's simply about being who it is that you are, being your own person, your authentic sense of self within a collective uh, gathering, you know, it doesn't have to be all that other stuff. And so the card here we have is um, time in Seychat. And this is, speaks of, this is a Gemini card too. My goodness, power one. Um, this speaks about communication. Uh, Seychat, she was the consort of Tahuti, basically his wife. Um, and this is a ace, uh, I mean, this is a scribe, an S of Lotus, right? So Lotuses are basically about purity and transcendence. It's about wisdom of knowledge and victory over the senses. And this here, she, Seychat, she's the patroness of scribes and writing. You know, she's the temple astronomer and architect, Keep and she keeps lists of eternity. This is about timing of things. So maybe you need to um, get on the timing of astrology. Maybe you need to connect with an astrologer to help you see um, when it's better for you to um, put something into play, or if it's a good time to move forward with something, to uh, release something, um, or perhaps with Mercury going direct this week, it's now the time for you to go ahead and get started on what it is that you were doing. Perhaps some of you are um, astrologers or psychics, you know, timekeepers, uh, you guys who really are offering knowledge to others and insight and downloads uh, to the collective. You know, that may be who it is that you are. It's important that you feel comfortable in being independent in that and showing up in your own personal uh, way of doing, way of being, way of going. So, Pow One, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that that was helpful. If so, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I would love to read your comments um, and know what's going on. If you want to share, that is... Um, I will be responding. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I hope that y'all have a wonderful week and I'm sending you lots of love. See you, Pile One. Okay, Pile Two, you guys chose this ocean, ocean Jasper. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the Ocean Jasper. Um, this is it's a green. When it's tumbled, it looks green. Um, but it's also a very fiery energy um in a sense because it rules the solar plexus and the heart chakra now um it is governed by capricorn cancer and pisces the element of this is water you know and it supports us in our reminder of that life is full of ebb and flows you know it's it's the ocean it's about the tides you know and riding them and being in the flow knowing when to go and knowing when to pause you know it's very good to support you in calming um any type of angst ang angsty energy you know it also promotes a sense of calm serenity um and peacefulness uh, very similar to the ocean you know, and really encouraging us to connect within with our emotional nature, um, with our intuitive nature as well, so that we can be focused mentally and with whatever comes, you know, by basically making the right decisions. Um, 
Similar to the howl light, it relieves stress and tension and promotes relaxation. Um, it also promotes a, a feeling very safe and secure and at home within ourselves, you know, and um, facilitating a sense of happiness and optimism as well, just kind of helping us connect with that inner sense of joy and um, really connect to our personal power, our personal authority, you know, in moving forward and that having the strength to move forward um, and to also support us in healing any type of wounds that have come about surrounding that issue, those issues, so that we could really connect with our full potential. So um, perhaps check in your chart where Capricorn, Cancer, and Pisces is so that you can get an idea of what this may be speaking to for you. And um, I'm not feeling any opposing energy when it comes to the solar plexus or the heart chakra right now. But I'm going to see what the cards say because nothing is, I'm not getting any, um, it just feels very neutral, right? So it's like not active in a sense. <laughs> like it, 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 it is present, it exists, but not in a way that uh, manifests activities, not activated. So let's see, <laughs> right, wow. Okay, and so the first card that comes out here is the tower card. So with the tower card showing up as the first card, that means that something that has been built on um, shaky, rocky, unstable ground, it's really, um, it's shifting, you know, very Uranian, very Martian in nature um, and, and allowing us to come to a space of tearing things down and rebuilding from the ground up. Now, this can simply be in regards to perception. This can be in regards to how it is that you move, how you go forward in the things that you've been doing. This can be about your emotions, about your mind. You know, with this ocean jasper, I'm feeling like it has to do with something that you built based off of one particular feeling and perhaps you may not be there in that space anymore. You know, sometimes we, we are growing. So things come down so that we can, um, when we have aligned to a better expression of our emotional nature, you know, we can rebuild based on that. Okay, so we have the King of Pentacles. This definitely has to do with something um, that you have been creating for yourself within your life, um, perhaps your own personal legacy. That may be changing how it is that you the thought you were about to come into something is going to look different, right? It's not going to be um, what it is that you were anticipating, I should say, you know, because that's the thing about getting to where it is that we want to go. Sometimes what that looks like when we get there, it changes. You know, we end up in that space of feeling that we wanted to be in. Um, but the actual manifestation of it may be a little bit different, you know, but this is bringing um, very confident energy forward into our life, wherever it is that we have not been confident within what it is that we have been doing. That is probably what it is that is coming down, you know, really allowing us to um, move forward in a way that... Um, is aligned with a better perception of ourselves, understanding of how to get there, how to move forward in that. But also um, when it comes to the type of routines that we have and us paying attention to the details, there may have been some details that we may not have been paying attention to. And this is basically an invitation to do that, you know, because with a tower card coming up, if you don't do it yourself, it's gonna happen anyway in a very chaotic way. Uh, or a very shocking way. So if you've already been feeling like something needed to change, something needed to go differently, it's time to do that so that you can kind of put yourself in a better space of routine, um, a better, to utilize better building blocks in supporting you in um, 
attaining your success. This could even speak to um, a shift in how people see you, your reputation in others, how um, people recognize you and notice you. That may be expanding and maybe growing benevolently. You know, it, it may not be anything um, disheartening because, like I said, it didn't feel. It just feels neutral with this stone. <clears throat> I don't feel any type of adverse emotions. <laughs> right. Wow. So we have here Sisterhood of the Rose, you know, focusing on beauty and devotion, priest priestess, mystic teacher, you know, and um, connecting with people that we can learn with, connecting um, with our spiritual selves. Maybe we're connecting with the mystic a uh, type of energetic energy within ourselves or with um, outside of ourselves. We may be very focused on our looks, you know, on our appearance, on taking better care of ourselves as well, maybe really focused on our health and being very committed to that, being devoted to ourselves, being devoted to how it is that we need to lead within our life, you know, and um, do what it is that is that we're being called to do so that we can attain the success it is that we want within our life so that we can attain the success it is um, and the achievement and the recognition it is that we desire. And you may be connecting with uh, groups of people who can help you with this, uh, even probably feminine on a woman if you chose PAL2. And if not, then this can be speaking to women in your life or um, that yin aspect within you and being very devoted to um, taking your time, being um, patient, being devoted, being um, very um, present with what it is that you are doing and how it is that you're going about it, really moving forward with it, not just on a practical level, but of a, on a spiritual nature as well, um, and aligning that to how it is that you are um, feeling within yourself, within your body, checking in, you know, and, um, you know, really recognizing your own cycles in a sense whether you are a man or a woman, we all have cycles. So the second card you have is the Luminous Warrior. The Luminous Warrior is a five. So this is definitely about the wisdom it is that you hold within yourself and utilizing that in a very, very positive way because the Luminous Warrior speaks about having no enemies. You know, he, um, who who he shows up as, even his, even his uh, enemies become his, his, uh, what's the word? They become part of his team, <laughs> basically, you know, because and not out of a sense of fear, but out of a sense of love and respect. Like, yeah, all right, I see you, you know, and really just always aligning with that higher nature of self, always connecting with that, that clairvoyance within that, that spiritual nature to support you in guiding you and where it is that you're going, but um, not doing it in a very uh, overburdening way. This is not about, um, it's not about how much it is that you can do. It's not about um, how long you can do it or anything like that. It's about um, does it feel good to you, really? Because <clears throat> the luminous warrior, it says he has no enemies in this world or the next. He is impeccable in word and deed. He focuses on his light rather than on what hides in the dark since he casts no shadow. He is as radiant as the sun and can transform his most terrible enemy into his ally. <clears throat> his power comes from not the sword, but from speaking truth at all costs. So this is about being very honest, you know, again, focusing on your power and wisdom. Don't be worried about what seems wrong with the world. Focus on what feels good, you know, folk, learn to see the positive even within what we deem as wrong, you know, feed the light, 
until you feel empowered. And that's when you don't need action to fix a situation, whereas they begin to resolve themselves within you see yourself, basically. So it also speaks about always following your higher nature. If you have been following your lower nature, it'll be um, that this tower card shows up in a very um, shocking way. So we have the Russo calls at 18. Your ideal belief waited in the distance. Call it and then it will come. So this is about basically creating your reality. This is a nine, recognizing and seeing your inner light. Wow, you guys. It is a lot of uh, internal, you know, seeing yourself energy here. Really um, recognizing that it is way the way in which you go about um, believing and seeing um, and thinking about things is what it is that will bring it to you because um, it's our thought patterns that create the echo that call in the future, All right? So let's see what she says. <clears throat> it's fun, she is fun. So basically it's time to have, not be so serious about what it is that you're doing, trusting the process, just going forward in it. You know, the uh, being adaptable, as that's the key to your success, not being so caught up in doing things one way, like being in any type of fixed nature um, and being more in a mutable sense of energy so that you can um, be who it is that you need to be at any moment. Um, some There is some circumstance that is coming for you uh, that is going to bring something very powerful in your life, but won't manifest until probably the summertime, right? And who who people see you as is what is bringing this in for you. You know, it's your charm, it's your beauty, it's your, it's, you know, you have a very um, sweet, charming disposition, you know, that is um, drawing in, like it's your, that is your ability to magnetize uh, what it is that you desire within your life. You may be connecting with a like-minded person this week um, that is going to lead to abundance within your life. Um, you may be also going to connect with people, uh, reuniting with people. Um, and you may just have some event to be part of this week. So see the affirmations. So it's time to get grounded, get centered, take the time that you need to um, get out of your head, you know, simply go within and connect with who it is that you are. Um, be okay with being who it is that you are, no matter what, all right? And um, love yourself enough to know that you deserve what it is that you desire in your life and really get centered in that space of that knowing and calling that in. And then you have harmony here. So when it comes to your relationships, you will be finding harmony within your relationships. It'll be time to work toward harmony in your relationships if you are not there. And it's that getting centered that will help you do that. Be honest, be truthful, share what it is that needs to be shared in order to connect in harmony with others within your life and within yourself, right? It says, so be honest about what needs to happen, where you're going, who you are, and accept that. I know in my heart that when something feels, that something is right, it feels easy breezy, even though it sounds cheesy. With this in mind, I banish all stress, insecurity, and tedious work from my relationships. Then I invite harmonious, harmonious relationships into my life and let them show up on their own time. Easy breezy things are rarely punctual. <laughs> wow. And we got Libra here, who is all about beauty. Be Libra loves beautiful things, beautiful people, all right, beautiful food, beautiful homes. They, If, if it look good, they want it, all right? <laughs> there is no, um, it is no way around it, okay? So if um, 
again, this is also about partnerships as well. So perhaps in your marriage with your significant other, you both may be seeing each other in a new light. You might just be seeing each other very from very beautiful eyes. You may be connecting with people and building partnerships, whether that's of work or friendship or connection in any, re any regard um, that just are very captivated by your beauty, you know, who really, in a sense, see you for who you are. That's one thing Libra does really well with them being about other people. They really take notice of um, who another person is so that they can um, be in that space to show up in harmony that brings lightness and flow to the situation, you know, but not without sacrificing themselves. A Libra is not doing anything that is um, going to push themselves to the wayside. And if they are, it's because they still have a little bit of growth that needs to happen to recognize that you can't really even they need to basically tap into that area and energy of that selfish aspect that we all hold within ourselves. So really taking the time to see yourself so that you can connect in your partnerships as well in a very beautiful um, way, a very connective way. Uh, we may also be finding ourselves feeling just in our connections, feeling, um, feeling a sense of justice in our connections, you know, in being able to align with um, what it is that we've been desiring for all this time when it comes to partnership, when it comes to uh, the people that we work with more so than anything, you know, and um, who we build with. And this can be love relationship as well, doesn't, because, um, you know, some people are with their partners and they are building businesses together, okay? They're doing big things together, all right? So um, that can speak on any level. And there may be someone coming through to help y'all if y'all have something going on. Now, let's see. We have the sun and the moon here. Let me look at this. And this is... This is the sistrum, and this is basically the scepter of Hetheru. It produces the sacred rhythm that innates vital protective forces. It echoes the sound of a stem of papyrus being shaken and recreates the harmony of divine life. It is used at the commencement of ceremonies to ward off nefarious forces and protect the sacred space. All right, so basically this week you guys are very protected from any type of naysayers anyone trying to um throw salt in your game all right anyone trying to uh throw you off your your beaten path you know um especially with it being so sacred and this really having to do with a lot of balance, tranquility, peace, and harmony being brought forward in the life <clears throat> through, um, but actualizing this as well, like it's, it's really feeling like some sense of achievement um, and know that when you gain this, when this comes to you, that you are protected, right? You have everything it is that you need. Um, get calm, get grounded, get centered within yourself because this might be something that's very shocking that you're receiving, right? Because you may be um, like, oh my goodness, you've been putting in some work of something and it's coming through. Uh, don't be uh, in a space that you feel like you are undeserving. Know that you are worth it, okay? Know your worth, know your value. See yourself as who it is that you truly are. Be secure and grounded in yourself and just do what it is that you have come to do, all right? Whether that is in relationship, in work, in just your personal life with your own self, however it is that that manifests, okay? So I hope you guys have a beautiful week. I am leaving it there, pal, too. I hope that this was helpful for you. If so, please let me know in the comments. I would love to read your comments. I will be responding, so look for that. If you do, um, leave a comment, and I will see you guys next Sunday. All right, y'all have a beautiful week. Hey, pal, three. So you guys chose the selenite stone, 
in the selenite stone it's like a overall phenomenal healer you know it, it rules the crown chakra um it's ruled by well it it supports it's supported by the crown chakra it is ruled by taurus as well as um the number eight so it helps facilitate a lot of strength and courage it helps clear any type of um illusions i can say and keeps you in a space of very positive thought um helps you you know you may be in the space of needing to forgive or um needing to accept forgiveness if that's even a thing um but it also really uh connects you to your spirit self your spiritual nature so so perhaps you need to um take some time in meditation this week that may support you greatly and thoroughly to help you really purify your energy find a sense of peace you know also support you in connecting to your psychic abilities so that you can connect to your intuition in a very heightened way right that brings you a sense of clarity it brings you a sense of awareness of who it is that you are how you showing up in the world and with your surroundings um you know because this is going to open up your crown chakra and really let that higher guidance come through that is needed in order to move forward in a very uh, light way now the selenite also speaks about past life energy and so um but it is uh, it also speaks of future lives as well so you may be getting some hints this week as to how your past life has affected your present life and where your present life is taking you you may be real uh coming to some understanding of these things and um be finding some sense of peace in this you know really um being able to operate and move forward in a very peaceful way and um support you in having better insight in what it is that you're doing where you're going and seeing things a lot more clear and a lot uh vaster much deeper than you have been before okay so let's see what um oh you may also be attaining some possessions this week some finances uh it may have something to do with clearing this energy and <clears throat> aligning to your natural sense of self-worth and not the sense of self-worth that you have been taught there's a difference so wow and the first card that comes out is the four of pinnacles so the four of pinnacles it speaks about being secure within yourself but it also speaks about um uh this is to me four of pinnacles in a sense is kind of poverty conscious in a sense because it's like a holding all your cards close to your chest like oh kind of like a donald duck kind of energy like i can't let this go no mr scrooge i you can't have this this is for me kind of thing but at the same time um this can also be bringing it can just be speaking of a sense of expansion it is that you've received and wanting to um get a little bit more grounded in the way in which it is that you go about accessing utilizing gaining um your finances your possessions and really uh getting a little bit more clear on um methods that can help you save but without being stingy if that makes sense all right so it, it it's basically you finding a way to be able to um capitalize on the gains you have gained in a way that is not going to lead you into that poverty consciousness so then we have the judgment card here yeah so okay and some transformation taking place in regards to um it's something it, you've learned some wisdom gained some wisdom when it comes to um material aspects of life the materializing the manifesting aspect of life 
right? And this is bringing you back to the space of wholeness. It's almost like you're having this rebirth and seeing things a little bit more clearly. You may be just simply valuing yourself a little bit more, your boundaries. You may have set your boundaries because the Four of Pentacles also speaks to having boundaries surrounding what is yours. You know, not necessarily um, that you won't share, but it's like, okay, I'm going to share with you, but don't be thinking you can always come and ask me for anything all the time like that, you know, and really, um, you know, protecting your energy in a sense, but also being uh, connected to your inner child, being innocent with it as well, which keeps you out of that space of flowing into poverty consciousness, right? So really answering the call after finding the space of security it is within yourself. Now, if you are feeling insecure, it's going to have you missing what it is that you're being called to do. So definitely, if you're feeling a little scattered and not feeling in this very secure, grounded energy, definitely take some time to get still within yourself, ground yourself, meditate, you know, see where it is that you're conflicted. That That is what duality is. It's... Um, Two, two opposites that don't go together, where polarity is two opposites that are magnetized to one another, right? So not saying that duality isn't a, it's bad, it exists in all things. We just have to recognize where duality is not serving us, where it's not um, aligning us to our whole sense of self, right? That's not allowing us to um call in what it is that we want to call in right and really be able to see everything um that is trying to reveal itself to us in the moment based off of being caught in these conflicting aspects of life or ourself <clears throat> Yeah, so you have the star mother here. How can you mother yourself? So it's definitely time to um, see yourself through the eyes of a mother. You know, um, praise yourself in that way. See yourself in high regard in that way. Parents, mothers love to brag on their children. They love, they're so proud of their children at any milestone. You need to be feeling the same way about yourself in um, where it is that you're going, what you're doing, where you are, and knowing that um, it will be that, that nurturing that is going to support you. Perhaps you may also need to nourish your body, right? You may need to, um, I'm getting something in regards to like inflammation here. Um, if that is something, definitely take some time to nourish yourself. Um, maybe you need to drink some water this week you know, really um, feel into your body and see what's going on there. Listen to the signs um, and what it is that they are tell you, telling you. Look into the metaphysics of your body so that it can um, help you understand the spiritual nature, the spiritual aspect of what it is that you're experiencing as well. Wow, that is exactly this, right? Because Four of Pentacles is the body. It is also very much so speaking of health, right? And um, <clears throat> hold on, Venus, yeah, wow. Okay, very much so speaking of health and judgment card is the spiritual nature of it. So this is very, very metaphysical energy, right? And um, needing to see how things have come about for you if you're having any situations like that and needing to care for yourself as a mother. Baby, what you need? You need something? How you feeling? Okay, let me fix this up for you so um, you can feel better. Mommy gonna make it better. You need to do that, so, do that with yourself, okay? So let's see. Yes, because it's time for you to be in the flow. You know, you need to trust the ebb and flow of life. Perhaps you have been feeling a little bit too restricted with this Four of Pentacles energy here. Four of Pentacles is kind of stagnant in a sense, all right? Because the Four of Pentacles um, 
it can it can be no movement because you're afraid you're gonna lose right but again this is a number two these dualities where you conflicted within yourself it's time to come up out of that so that you can move into the flow go with the ebbs and the the ebb and the flows of life it's time for you to jump into the stream of the current so it can take you to where it is that you're going but you're going to have to trust the process you're going to have to have faith in the process you're going to have to have faith in any healing that has to take place for you to get down the river right and go down wherever it is that the flow is taking you all right so that you can really um align to what it is that is yours to do when you once you step into the current you'll always have the signs it is you need into where it is that you need to uh shift or where you need to go or where you need to just let things flow right so um really taking time to get still really need to connect with that yin energy within yourself um and connect to your intuition as well. Letting that guide you is a lot of trust here that needs to happen. Okay. And so this is um, this is a season, the second half of winter, is it? Yes, it is the second half of winter. So that is Aquarius and Pisces energy. So um, you need to see how your life what's what you see in your life um how that has reflected from your past experiences and the everything that you've put into it up until this point all right because this is about reflection reflecting seeing things in the past seeing how things have gone but also recognizing reflection is also a mirror how are these things mirroring you what is triggering what it is that you're experiencing what is triggering this conflict within you where is it within you do you need to go to let go you know so that you can move forward at a more um graceful space and pace you know not necessarily uh quick but where the conflict is minimal yeah so this is the common dolphin and says you never know what um, a great idea may arise in your sleep. It's a six. So it's about making decisions. Again, that duality. Wow, that's coming up a lot. It seems like a lot of us may just be feeling very conflicted in the way in which um, we are choosing to go about a thing. It's like we have a hard time trusting that if we have to make a change that it's going to work for ourselves, right? And the common dolphin speaks about clairvoyance. It speaks about common sense simply being your intuition. <laughs> and that's so true. You know, it's like, oh, okay, I need to do this, not that. That doesn't make any sense. You know, just seeing the forest for the trees, recognizing um, that if I do this, I'm going to go here. If I don't do this, I'm not going there. You know, and I did this, so here I am. So it's a really all in a matter of tapping into your senses, tapping to what you see this week, tapping to what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch. How does that make you feel? Um, what does that trigger within you? What does that um, make you remember, make you believe within you? You know, um, it also says have faith in your intuition. Um, if you live worthily, your request will appear. So you also have to believe that what you're doing is right, um, that you're taking the right path, that you're taking the right steps. You know, just stay in your sense of integrity. What makes sense? You don't have to force it to make sense when it already does. You know, the it's right in front of you, you know, and that's what being tuned into your senses allow you to recognize is that what it is that you're looking for it's already here. It's right here. And that is what's going to support you in cutting out that confusion as well. Um, pay attention to your dreams this week. Pay attention to how you feel. Because this, this is really all about you. There's nobody really involved with you. 
in your situation this week. Yeah, gratitude. Mm -hmm. So if you have been having any situation, um, adverse situations with in your life, within your body, within your mind, however it's manifesting, know that this is happening because you need to be grateful for everything it is that you have, what you've been able to accomplish, the people who were in your life, the the bed that you have to sleep in, all right, the car that you got to drive in, okay, all of those things. It's time for you to really um, wake up and see all the benevolence that exists in your life and it's going to take you further than you probably ever imagined. Gratitude opens up doors that you would have never thought existed. Okay, today I am grateful for all the little things, even when the big things suck. There are always plenty of little things I can be at least a little grateful for, like hot showers and music, and the fact that humans invented an internet, and I'm allowed to use it whenever I want to. Use fingers and thumbs to do whatever I think them to do at any given moment. So you guys, yeah, be grateful for the small things, you know, that you got all five, 10, 10, 10 fingers and 10 toes, you know, that you can breathe, all right, that you got a jacket to put on in this cold weather, okay, the little things, and celebrate Celebrate the small things. Be grateful for them. Whatever the accomplishments are, you know, everything should be celebrated, honestly, so that um, you can keep that, that momentum going of that celebratory energy. Granted, things will dip, but if you're still, if you still have that high, you, the dip will not seem so unsavory. You know, it says, when I come across people in happy, healthy relationships, I give jealousy the finger and celebrate their joy. When I do so, I'm rooting for the good guys, which means I'm a good guy. And that means all of us win. Who wants to celebrate? Yeah, so celebrate yourself. Celebrate you, people who you see are happy, who um, are fulfilled, are, that, are living a good life, you know? It's like, hey, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I want that too. Kudos to them, you know. And if this is you, kudos to you, you know, for this life that you live. It's a beautiful thing to be alive, all right, especially in this time. If you know, you know. <laughs> so the last card that you have here is the last quarter moon. And the last quarter moon speaks about releasing and letting go. Um It also speaks about adjusting what it is. It could be just your attitude that needs to be adjusted. It could be a, um, the way in which you go about um, perceiving things that need to shift as well. <clears throat> it talks about decomposition, right? So something is um, dying so that fertile so that the soil can be refertilized and grow re, like in a renewed sense is also a seven this is about truth and honesty as well so <clears throat> it's important that you be honest with yourself this week about what's going on with you how it is that you're feeling about what's going on in your life um honest about what's really happening sometimes we be caught up in this illusion that we don't have enough that we don't have what we need in our life and we really have everything <laughs> and in this space of wanting more right but that's poverty consciousness that is what that is not recognizing that abundance is here right here right now right that's the only way that you open the door for more to come if you are so focused on, okay, I need more, I need more, I can't do this unless I have this, then you will never have it and you'll never be able to do it. And if you do, it'll take you a very long time. All right. So it says um, focus for creation and planning, break down, readjust and transition, reorient and take a lot of self-care, forgive others and yourself, hibernation commences. 
Yeah, so you may be forgiving. It feels like you need to forgive yourself this week. I don't, it's nobody else involved here, honestly. Um, it's really time to take care of yourself this week and be grateful at the fact that you can take care of yourself this week in the way it is that you need to. Um, and really always uh, take the take those moments of stillness that are needed so that you can be able to reflect and be present with what it is that you're choosing to do, feel, think in this moment, be that is going to manifest the future of where it is going, of where things are going, right? It, that is right now where you are is what is going to determine the quality of the soil that you can plant your seeds in, right? Because you may have planted seeds, but there are more to come. And the soil still has to be fertile with what is already growing, right? So you always have to tend to the soil, have to add fertilizer to it. And that's what decomposition offers you, the ability to continue to feed and nourish what it is that is already here because you already have what it is that you need it's, it just feels like you're not seeing that <clears throat> but this week should definitely help you come out of that get uh, gain a sense of clarity and calm and stillness you know in a way that will allow you to begin to jump in the stream again and move forward into your flow so pal three I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope this supports you throughout the week and offers you some great guidance and love. If so, please let me know. Um, let me know how you're feeling, how this served you. If you would like to, I will be responding. And I hope that you all have a beautiful week and a very prosperous week. I will see you guys next Sunday. Sending you all my love. Bye.